The Cube's live coverage is made possible by funding from Dell Technologies, creating technologies that drive human progress. Hey everyone, welcome back to Barcelona, Spain. It's The Cube. We're live at MWC 23. This is day two of our coverage. We're giving you four days of coverage, but you already know that because you were here yesterday. Lisa Martin with Dave Nicholson. Dave, this show is massive. I was walking in this morning and almost getting claustrophobic with the 80,000 people that are joining us. There is, seems to be at, at MWC 23, more interest in enterprise class technologies than we've ever seen before. What are some of the things that you've observed with that regard? Well, I've observed a lot of people racing to the highest level messaging about how wonderful it is to have the kiss of a breeze on your, on your cheek in a field of flowing wheat. <laughs> I want to hear about the actual things that make this stuff possible. Right. So I think we have a couple of guests here who can, who can help us start to go down that path of actually understanding the real cool stuff that's behind the scenes. And absolutely, we got some cool stuff. We got two guests from Dell. Dave Lincoln is here, the VP of Networking and Emerging Server Solutions, and Dania Davidson, Director, Edge Server Product Planning and Management at Dell. So great to have you. Two yeah. Daves and a Davidson. And I a feel Davidson, like yeah. she stands alone here. <laughs> so guys, talk about, Dave, we'll start with you, the newest generation of Power Edge servers. What's new? Why is this so exciting? What challenges for telecom operators is it solving? Yeah, well, so uh, this is actually Dell's largest uh, server launch uh, ever. It's the most expansive, uh, which is notable uh, because of, we already have a, a pretty significant portfolio. We're very proud of our core mainstream portfolio, but uh, really since the supercompute in Dallas in November, that we started a rolling thunder of launches, uh, MWC being part of that, uh, leading up to DTW here in May, um, where we're actually going to be announcing big investments in those parts of the market um, that are the growth segments of server, specifically AIML, where we, in, to address that, we're investing heavy in our XE series, which we, uh, as I said, we announced uh, at Supercompute in uh, November. And then we have, uh, to address the CSP segment, uh, a big investment around the HS series, which we just announced. And then uh, the lastly, the Edge tel Telecom segment, which we're, uh, we had the biggest uh, investment, biggest announce uh, in portfolio launch with XR series. Didi, let's dig into that, yeah. where, we, where we see the growth coming from, you mentioned telecom, CSPs, but the edge. Yeah. What are some of the growth opportunities there that organizations need Dell's help with to manage so that they can deliver what that demanding end user is wanting? Uh, the biggest areas we're seeing, obviously, in addition, telco is being the biggest one, but the other areas too we're seeing is in retail and manufacturing as well. And so internally, I mean, we're, we're going to be focused on hardware, but we also have a solutions team who are working with us to build the solutions focused on retail and edge and, and telco as well, on top of the servers that we'll talk about shortly. What are some of the biggest challenges that retailers and manufacturers are facing? You know, when, w during the pandemic, retailers, those that were successful pivoted very quickly to you know, curbside delivery. Yeah. Those that didn't survive weren't able to do that digitally. Yeah. But we're seeing such demand at yeah. the retail edge. At, on the consumer side, we want to get whatever we want right now. It has yeah. to be delivered, it has to be personalized to me. Talk a little bit more about some of the challenges there within those two verticals and how Dell is helping to address those with the new server technologies. For retail, um, I think there's a couple things. So one is like in the fast food area. So obviously through COVID, a lot of people got familiar and comfortable driving through. Yeah. Um, and so there's probably a certain fast food restaurant that everyone's pretty familiar with. They, they're pretty efficient in that. And so there are other customers who are trying to replicate that. And so how do we help them do that uh, from a technology perspective? Um, from a retail perspective, it's, it's all the, it's, it's one of the pickup, right, and the online experience, but when you go into a store, like I don't know about you, but I go to Target, and I'm looking for something, and I have kids who are kind of distracting you. Um, it's like, where is this one thing? And so I pull up the Target app, for example, and, right. and it tells me where it's at, right? And then, obviously, stores want to make more money, so like, hey, since you picked this thing, these are these things around you. And um, so things like that is what we're, we're having conversations with customers about. It's so interesting because the demand is there. Yeah, it is. And it's not going to go anywhere. No. Uh, it's certainly not going to be dialed down. Yeah. We're not going to want less stuff less often. Yeah. <laughs> and, as, and, as, and as typical consumers, we don't necessarily make the association between what we're seeing in the palm of our no. hand on a mobile device right. 
and the infrastructure that's actually supporting all of it. Right. People hear the term cloud and they think cloud, phone, mystery. Yeah, what magic are some, just happens. Yeah but, yeah, but but in fact, in order to support the things that we want to be able to do yeah. on the move, you have to optimize the server hardware yes. in certain ways. What does that mean exactly? When you say that it's optimized, what mm -hmm. are the sorts of decisions that you make when you're building I think of this in terms of Lego bricks yes. put yes. together. What are some of the decisions so there were, you make? There were a few key things that we really had to think about in terms of what was different from a data center, which obviously supports the cloud environment. But it was all about how do we get closer to the customer, right? How do you get things really fast and how do we um, compute that information really quickly? So for us, it's things like size. Right, so our servers is literally, one of them is the size of a shoe box. In fact, we have it's a picture true. with Dave <laughs> took, off, true. This, took off his shoe. This actual sh it's actually as big as a shoe. It, <laughs> is, it is, it is. Yeah. To be fair, it's a pretty big shoe. <laughs> true. It true. is, but it's, it's, it's small and relative to the typical <laughs> relative, big servers like, that you see. Right. Um, I see what you're doing. You find yeah. the guy with the size 12. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it's the size of a yeah. shoe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, but it's, it's literally the size of a shoe, and that's our smallest our smallest mm -hmm. server, and it's the smallest one in the portfolio, it's the XR4000. And so we've actually crammed a lot of technology in there, going with the Intel Xeon D processors, for example, to get into that compute power. Um, the XR8000, which you'll be hearing a lot more about shortly with, um, with your next guest, is one, I think, from a, from a telco perspective, is our flagship product. And size was a big thing there, too. Um, ruggedization, so it's like NEBS recertification, so it can actually operate continuously in negative five to 55C, which for customers, right, they need that range of, of um, temperature right. operation. Um, flexibility was a big thing too, and meaning that um, there's some customers who wanted to have one system in different um, areas of deployment. So can I take this one system and configure it one way take that same system, configure it another way, and have it here. So flexibility was really key for us as well. And so um, you'll actually be seeing that in the next segment. And coming. I think one, if, if there's uh, some of the uh, common themes you're hearing from this is our focus on innovation, purpose-built mm -hmm. servers. So yes, our times, you know, there was you know, economic situation, all that kind of stuff, is it kind of, you know, is it tough? Yeah. But far from receding, we've doubled down on investment, and you've seen that with the products that we're launching here. Uh, and we'll be launching in the in, in the years to come. Yeah. And I imagine there's a pretty sizable, Dave, impact to the total addressable market for Power Edge based on the launch, what you're doing. There's got to be a, a TAM, a good sized TAM expansion. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, depending on you know how you look at it, it's roughly we add about 30 billion dollars of addressable TAM between the three purpose-built series that we've launched: XE, HS, and XR. Can you comment on? I know Dell and customers are like this. Talk about, I'd love to get both of your perspectives, I'm sure you have favorite customer stories, but talk about the involvement of the customer in the generation and the evolution of PowerEdge. Where are they in that process? What kind of feedback do they deliver? Well, I, I mean, just to start, um, one thing that is a central core tenet of Dell uh, period is it all is about the customer. All of it, everything that we do is about the customer. And so there is a big focus at, at our level from, and from on high to get out there and talk with customers. And actually we have a pretty good story mm -hmm. around XR8000, which is, I call it our flagship of the XR line that we've just announced. And because of this deep customer intimacy, there was a last minute kind of architectural design change, mm -hmm. which actually would have been, come to find out, it would have been sort of a fatal flaw for, uh, for deployment. So we corrected that because of this tight intimacy with our customers. This was in uh, thanks, two Thanksgivings ago, about. Mm -hmm. And um, so anyway, it was it's super cool. And the fact that we were able to make a change so late in the development cycle, that's a testament to a lot of the speed and uh, speed of innovation that we're driving. Um, so anyway, that was that's that's one just case in point example. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about AI. We can't go to any trade show without talking about AI. The big thing right now is Chat GPT. I was using yeah. it the other day. It's yeah. so interesting. But the growing demand for AI. Talk about how it's driving the evolution of the server so that more AI use cases can become more ubiquitous. In the Edge space primarily, um, we actually have another product. Um, so I guess what you'll notice in the XR line itself, um, because there are so many different use cases um, and technologies that support the different use cases, we actually have a range of form factors. So we have a really small 
Like I said, it was a 350 milliliter, the size of, size of a shoe box, you know, Dave's shoe box. <laughs> um, and then we also have, um, at the other end, a 472. So still, still small, but a little bit bigger. But we did recognize, obviously, AI was coming up. And so that is our XR7620 platform. And that does support uh, two GPUs, right? So like for edge inferencing, uh, making sure that we have the capability to support customers in that too. But also in the small one, we do also have a GPU capability there that also helps um, in those other use cases as well. Um, but so we, we've, we've built the platforms, even though they're small, to be able to, to handle um, the GPU power for, for customers. So nice tight package, a lot of power there. Yeah. The size, as we've all clearly demonstrated, the size of Dave's shoe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dave, talk about <laughs> Dell's long-standing commitment to really helping to rapidly evolve the server market. Yeah. It's a pivotal player there. Well, like I was saying, like we see innovation. I mean, this is, a, to us, it's a race to the top. You talked about racing and messaging, that sort of thing when you, when you opened up the show here. Um, but we see this as a, a race to the top. Having worked at other uh, server companies where maybe it's a little bit different, maybe more of a race to the bottom sort of approach, I, that's what I love about being at Dell. Like this is very much, we understand that it's innovation is that is what's going to you know, deliver the most valuable value for our, our customers. So whether it's some of the uh, for, you know, first to market, first of its kind sort of innovation like you find in uh, the XR4000 or XR8000 or any of our, the XE line, um, we know that at the end of the day, that is what's going to uh, propel Dell, do the best for our customers and thereby do the best for us. But to be honest, it's a little bit surprising walking by some of our competitors' booths. There's been like a dearth of like zero, like no, like it's almost like you wouldn't even know that there was a, a big launch here, right? right. Is it yeah. just me? No. It was wild, we've been walking around. And yet we've had, and it's sort of maybe I should take this as flattery, <laughs> but a lot of our competitors have been coming by to our booth Every day, actually. They yeah, came by multiple day. times yeah. yesterday, they came by multiple times today. Yeah. They're taking pictures of our stuff. I kind of I, I kind of want to just send them a sample and see you. Or your <laughs> shoe. <laughs> right? Or they can get under my shoe, right? But, but anyway, anyway, so I, I yeah. suppose I should take it as an honor. Yeah. I, and, and conversely, when we've walked over there, we're actually getting boxed out. Maybe I need to hide Dell next time, but, um, <laughs> yeah. right? We just had that with We just uh, had that experience, yeah. The, uh, it was kind of yeah. funny. That's but. a good position to be in. You yeah. talked about the involvement of the customers Talk a little bit about Dell's ecosystem is also massive. It's it's part of what makes Dell yep. Dell. Wait, did you just say ecosystem? <laughs> <laughs> After David just uh, <laughs> you caught but, that? <laughs> Darn it! But talk about the 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 influence that the partner ecosystem and also some of the feedback from the partners as you've been rapidly evolving the server market and and clearly your competitors are taking notice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I well sorry. Go ahead, Do you want to take that? Go ahead. I mean, I would say generally, one of the things that Dell pr pr prides itself on is be being able to deliver the world's best innovation into the hands of our customers at faster and better than any, like the, the, the optimal solution. So whether it's, you know, working with, uh, you know, great partners like, you know, Intel, AMD, Broadcom, these sorts of folks, uh, that is, at the end of the day, that is our core mantra. Again, it's, it's wrapped around service, doing the best, what's, you know, what's best for the customer, and we want to you know, bring the world's best innovation from our technology partners, get it into the hands of our partners you know, faster and better than uh, you know, any other option out there. Well, it's a, it's, it's a satisfying business for all of us to be in, because to your point, I made a joke about the high-level messaging, but really, that's what it comes down to. Yeah. We do these things, we feel like sometimes we're toiling in obscurity, working with the hardware, but what it delivers, mm -hmm. the experiences Absolutely. that are delivered yeah. at the end are truly meaningful. So it's, it's, a fun, it's a really fun thing to be a part of. It is. Absolutely. Yeah, it is. is there a favorite customer story that you have that really articulates the value of what Dell is doing for PowerEdge at the edge? Um. It's probably one I can't particularly name, obviously, but it was, they have different environments. So uh, in one case, it's like on flights or on sea vessels and just being able to use the same box in those different environments would be really cool. And they really appreciated having the small compact where they could just take the server with them and go somewhere. Um, that that was really cool to me in terms of how it, they were using the products that we built for them. I have one that's kind of funny. Please, okay. it's around XR8000. Uh, again, a customer that I won't name. That they, but they're so proud of it. Like they almost kind of feel like they have co-defined it with us. They want to be on the patent with us. So anyway, that's uh, <laughs> that's what they went to. Yeah, right? you know yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. and it just shows the strength of the partnership that exactly. Dell has yeah. across. Exactly. 
the ecosystem of partners, yep. customers, CSPs, yeah, yeah. telecoms, yeah. edge. Guys, thank you so much for joining oh, us today. You. Thank you. Sharing what's new with Power Edge. We can't wait to, we're just, we're cracking open the box. We saw the shoe. <laughs> And we're going to be digging in a little bit more yeah. later. So we're thank gonna you. To, we're going to we're going to be able to touch something soon. Yes, uh, yes. yes. In a couple I, minutes. Coming up, we next, next segment, I think. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thanks for setting the table yeah. for that, guys. We really oh, appreciate thank you. your time. Thank you for having All right, us. Thank you. All right, thank our thank pleasure. For our guests and for Dave Nicholson, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching the Cube, the leader in live tech coverage, live from Barcelona, Spain, MWC 23. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with our next guest. <laughs>